Welcome to this tutorial on pigeon pose. In this tutorial, we will cover full pigeon, seated pigeon, double pigeon, reclined pigeon. I think that's all the pigeons, all the pigeons I know anyway. So we'll go through each stage and explain how to get in and out of each one. Okay, so we'll take the first variation of pigeon, which is the most common to be done in vinyasa classes, in my experience, which is the full pigeon pose. So we'll take it from a downward facing dog, lifting the hips up and back. To get into this full pigeon pose, you're going to inhale the right leg up and back into your three-legged dog. As you exhale, pull the thigh in towards your chest, shift the weight forward, and then from here, that right thigh outwardly rotates. We want the right knee to come uh, right behind the right wrist, and the shin bone kind of goes across the mat so that the foot comes to the opposite side. From there, lower down the back knee and shift your weight back. Now, if your hip is high, mine's a little bit on the high side, take a block or a pillow or something that you can put underneath your hip for support. Now we're not trying to sit on that hip. If you can see now I'm fully sit, seated and my hips are open. We're really trying to keep the hips square towards the mat. And you may feel an opening on the straight leg side of the hip flexor, as well as the rotator muscles in the glutes on the right leg, the bent leg. So in this variation of pigeon, if this feels intense, then you can always stay upright here. You'll also get a nice back bend in this position, right in the lower back or you can fold forward and this takes the stress off of the back and brings a little bit more weight into that right hip. This will intensify the sensation a little bit. And then just breathe and let the hip open. Something to look out for here is the sensation of pins and needles or numbness in this front foot. So if that is the case for you, then just very gently come up out of your full pigeon you would tuck the toe, move the knee, and find your way back to downward facing dog or child's pose. Okay, so let's move through the other side. This way you'll have a little bit better view of the leg and its positioning. So inhaling the left leg up and back, exhaling, bringing the thigh towards the chest, then outwardly rotate the thigh so that the left knee is behind the left wrist. Gently lower down the shin bone, the back knee can touch down, and then inch the back knee further back so that the hips sink a little bit. If you need the support, take something underneath your hip and slide it underneath. Inhaling, sitting up. If this is intense for you here, then stay here. If you'd like to fold forward, just to feel the feels, go ahead and fold forward. Now in this position, I'll point out to you that the neck and the head need to be supported in one way or the other. Now you can keep yourself active and keep the neck nice and long and lifted here. But if you'd rather relax a little bit more in the pose, you can rest the head down. I like to take my thumbs in prayer hands and put them right where the eyebrows start and relax here. It feels pretty good on the sinuses. <clears throat> you can let your eyes close here. But if that's uncomfortable or if your head doesn't quite reach, you have a second block. You can always use your second block and rest a head, your head on that. Or you can use your hands. You can stack your hands and make fists. Or flatten them out and come all the way down to the mat. You can even extend the arms out in front and let your head come all the way down to the mat. This is a more intense variation. And you can do this with or without the block underneath your hip. And to come out of this, you would just gently walk the hands back, lifting the torso. Tucking the toe, lift the knee. Gently lift up and back into your downward facing dog. So that's a full regular pigeon pose. Now here's some other variations for you. From a seated position, we'll go through a seated pigeon. Take one leg, cross the ankle over the thigh, just above the knee joint. Make sure that the foot is all the way over so that if you wanted to roll the ankle around, it has that movement. We don't want the foot to be sitting on the thigh and crossing over. And the reason for this is that it changes the stretch in the hip. With the ankle crossed, it targets a very specific area of the hip joint. So bringing the hands behind and your hands can go whatever angle is comfortable for you. 
step up the bottom foot so that the heel is in line with the sit bone. This other foot is just kind of dangling here. If you want to, you can flex it. If you want more activity up there, that's fine. You can also point the foot if you're a dancer like I am and you just like to play with your feet. But let's get back to the pose itself, the hips. Now in this position, if you feel like you want a little bit more intensity, first start by lifting the chest. In this pose, we don't want to sink back into the shoulders. We want the neck and the spine to be nice and tall and the shoulders to be unaffected. So to activate them is to unaffect them. This will give you a little extra discomfort, I would think. We want to activate. You know? So once your chest is lifted up over the shin bone, then you can lift the hips and slowly scooch them bit by bit towards the supporting foot, hip to heel being mindful that you're not sitting to one side or the other. And I'm gonna turn myself here for one other point. Make sure that the heel is in line with your sit bone. Very often the heel likes to come in front, but this creates an imbalance in the spine and the hips. So we're trying to keep ourselves square. When you're ready to come out of this, if the hips are close to the heel, simply move the hips back and then let the legs straighten. Extend it out and give it a good shake. So that's your seated pigeon. Now the next variation in the seated position would be double pigeon, and this targets both hips at the same time. This can be rather intense, and I'll give you some modifications for this as well. So I'll start with the left leg underneath, bringing it across. Then the right leg comes. And again, the foot is all the way over to the side. And in this position, you want to try to stack the shin bones one on top of the other. Uh, for people who have tighter hips, this is what this can look like sometimes. And that's fine. It's a starting point. It's, it's where your body is at that point. To help yourself get a little bit deeper, you can bring your hand to the thigh, never on the knee, but a little bit lower than that, and gently press the thigh bone down. Over time, the hips will start to open up bit by bit, and you'll notice that your hips start to come a little bit closer to the mat. Now, if this is really uncomfortable on the bottom leg, you can take a block, slide it underneath your sit bones so that you have a little bit more height. By lifting the hips up, it allows the bottom leg some room to rotate and it gives it some space. And again, we're trying to stack the shin bones one on top of the other, sitting up nice and tall. Another variation within this double pigeon, if you're flat on the mat and your shin bones are relatively stacked right on top of one another and this top knee is pretty low, you can start to fold forward over the legs. So starting by lifting up out of the waistline and then exhaling and slowly walking yourself forward bit by bit, being mindful of any pins, needles, or tingling in the feet, as it's a signal from your body that you're a little bit too far. And only going as far as your body will allow, and everybody will be different from one side to the other. But to come out of this, if you're folded forward on an inhale, you bring yourself up. Exhale where you need. You can use your hands to untangle the legs. And I like to bring the feet about mat width apart, hands come behind and gently windshield wiper the legs from side to side. It's a very slow motion so that you're not shocking the system or your hips. Coming out of poses is sometimes the hard part, the uncomfortable part. Our very last variation of pigeon is the reclined variation. So in the reclined variation, you want to come onto your spine so you're laying back. And this is similar in the legs as the seated variation, not double pigeon, but the regular seated. So we'll take the right leg and extend it upwards. It doesn't have to be straight. Then outwardly rotate the thigh, bend the knee and cross your ankle over the thigh. From there, you've created a diamond of space between the legs. Take your right hand and slide it through that space. The left hand comes around the outer edge of the left leg and both hands wrap around the left leg. From there, gently pull the legs towards your chest for your reclined pigeon. 
Again, this top foot can flex or point. You can play with the toes. You can roll the ankle, whatever you need to do here, as it doesn't really affect the hip all that much. But if you do feel a different sensation and it feels good, then go ahead and stay with it. If it feels bad, then obviously don't do that. <clears throat> to intensify this variation of pigeon, our reclined pigeon, Use your right elbow against the right thigh as you pull your hands in towards your chest. This will increase the rotation of the right thigh bone to give you more sensation in the hip. And from here, gently release. And all I have to do is untangle the leg and switch to the other side. Be very mindful here too that your head is supported. So for some people, they, they have a lot of tightness and the head lifts up. If the head is lifted up, then bring something underneath your head for support, a pillow or a block, whatever you might need or have around. And those are our four variations of pigeon. Thank you for practicing with me. If you like the class, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And be sure to click the bell for email notifications when new videos are released. Let me know how you felt after doing this practice in the comments below. Please share this video if you know someone who might enjoy it. And please consider a donation to help support the production of more fabulous yoga videos for you. Have a beautiful day. Namaste, my friends. Be well and remember to breathe. See you next time.